Welcome, folks. Uh, my name is Gary Johnson. I'm Senior Outreach Manager for the Better Business Bureau. Uh, we serve Minnesota and North Dakota from our office in Burnsville, Minnesota. Uh, we also have offices in Fargo, St. Cloud, and Mankato. Uh, the Better Business Bureau was started here in Minnesota 107 years ago, and we are primarily a, a resource for uh, people to uh, check before they buy. You can come to us, and uh, if you're thinking about doing business with a company, uh, you can give us uh, the company name, and we can give you information as to uh, how they stand with the Better Business Bureau as far as uh, their uh, place of business, who the principals are, do they have any unanswered uh, issues at the Better Business Bureau, or any government actions against them. That'll give you an opportunity to see how they've treated others in the past. We also uh, handle dispute resolution. So if you uh, are involved with a service provider that uh, say uh, didn't fulfill a contract or did shoddy workmanship, uh, you can send a written statement uh, stating your case and we forward that onto the business for their response. And we do have a good satisfaction rate uh, with consumers for uh, handling these issues. Because if a good company gets your complaint from us, they typically take action because they don't want it to reflect on their grade rating uh, or be on their record. So uh, a bit of the, that's a bit of the Better Business Bureau. And why I'm here today is to uh, talk to you folks about uh, scams and frauds, and we want you to be wise, be informed, and be empowered. So hopefully we can uh, get some of that answered today. Why elders are uh, at risk. And like myself, <clears throat> growing up, uh, where uh, in a time where you, we respected authority, we uh, took people at their word, uh, and we uh, knew who the bad guys were, so to speak, and steered clear. Uh, but that has really changed. Uh, now uh, there are so many ways that uh, these con artists and, and uh, fraudsters can get our information and use us against us. You know, that circle on our backs of seniors where we grew up trusting people, respecting authority, that's put a big target on the back of uh, our, our demographic. Uh, another side of that coin is people over 60 control about 60% of the wealth and assets of this country. Again, another circle on that target uh, where they think we have resources uh, that they can attach. And then there are a lot of seniors that are on fixed income where they may be interested in how to add a little more gold to their golden years and be open to lottery and sweepstakes, frauds and scams. And so those are some of the reasons that we are, uh, as a group, uh, targeted uh, for these con artists. And you know, these uh, when I do meetings and things like this, and when I say, have you ever been uh, solicited over the phone and everybody's hands go up, uh, the phone calls are uh, really uh, coming in and, and that's the most uh, opportunity they have uh, to reach us. And <clears throat> to give out uh, information to someone, we'll talk a little bit more about that, about protecting your private information and uh, requesting, uh, you know, uh, banks uh, information, uh, social security numbers, those kinds of things uh, is what really, uh, you know, targets and gains information from seniors. Some of the common schemes and frauds that are out there, uh, you know, telephone, mail, and uh, computer. And we'll talk about how these uh, three aspects uh, of, of where these con artists get uh, our information and use it against us, uh, and we'll review that. Uh, the telephone is where they have the most contact with seniors. Uh, because we were in that generation where we answered the phone, uh, talked to people, and uh, what we get a lot of times is someone calling, purporting to be from your uh, bank, uh, your clinic, and there's some issues with uh, your uh, uh, account. They want to verify information, and they'll ask the soft questions like, uh, they'll say your name and you agree, uh, your address, yes, that's where I live, and uh, uh, all of a sudden they'll ask you for account numbers or verifying those kinds of things. And if that contact ever gets personal, 
just hang up the phone. And if you get a call from someone purporting to be from the IRS or Microsoft or Medicare, Social Security, uh, just know that these agencies don't reach out by the telephone. So just be uh, aware uh, that those things happen. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the red flags. Have you been pushed to make quick decisions? This is one that is uh, out there where they'll call and say things like uh, your Social Security uh, has been compromised. And if you don't cooperate and give us this information, uh, your checks will stop. And so they kind of force you into, I don't want that to happen. And uh, you get drug along the path. And you're offered, you know, there'll be one thing that you may be offered uh, to do a small favor for someone, like they want to send you a check. Uh, and for your help, uh, you keep a portion, send uh, your check off to a third party for the balance. And what happens is their check bounces and you're stuck. So we just want to make sure people don't uh, get drawn into those kinds of things. And if you're asked to verify your information, and we'll probably uh, beat this point uh, pretty hard uh, in this presentation, but they're, they're masters at getting uh, this information and using it against you. So those are some of, the, some of the obvious red flags that are out there. How to avoid these issues. When we look at uh, the best thing in the world to do is just hang up. But if you get drawn into these conversations, uh, just take a deep breath and avoid making any on-the-spot decisions like uh, they need your help or they need your information, they need your money and they need it right now. Uh, just take a breath and don't get caught up into that, um, that information giving out. Uh, caller ID uh, is uh, you know, a good tool and it's been around for a long time. Uh, but there are things that are changed in that aspect too where uh, they can use computer programs to make that call look like it's coming uh, from Grand Rapids or even a neighbor or friend. So don't uh, get caught up in that. Uh, use your uh, uh, answer machine, screen your calls. If it's a friend or a relative, you can call them back. They'll leave a message. And giving out personal information like social security numbers, uh, Medicare numbers, that's been a big thing too where uh, someone might call, say they're from Medicare and they're doing spot checks and, and uh, did you receive your card and you agree with that? Yes, I got my card. Well, we're surveying a, a, a select number of people to make sure that our system is working properly and then they'll ask for you to verify your number. And they brought you along a path sounding like they're just doing you a big favor and doing the rest of the seniors a big favor by tracking to make sure that the system is working. Just don't get caught up in anything like that. Hang up the phone. If it's a service provider uh, that's asking for this information, give them a call uh, and say, is there problems with my account? Those kind of things. So uh, a real way to avoid uh, that situation. Mail scams, uh, lottery and sweepstakes ones that are, are big. Uh, you have won uh, $10 million and a new Mercedes or a, a trip to the Caribbean and those kinds of things. Uh, we just want you to, to know that be very, very cautious. If you didn't buy a ticket, you're not going to win a prize. And if you have to pay to win a prize, you did not win a prize. So uh, we'll talk a, a little bit about uh, how those uh, con artists work in that regard. Uh, charity and natural disasters. There's a, a disaster around every corner where there's fires, floods, volcanoes in Hawaii, uh, starving children, abused animals, those kinds of things. And these con artists listen to the news, read the paper, and see what's on top of mind, what's going around uh, with these uh, uh, disasters. And they plead for your help. These people need your help. Uh, but just have a speech in your back pocket that says, our giving is done for this year. Send me your information. We'll consider you for next year. Hang up the phone. Because if they have your phone number, they have your address. And if it is something that's worthy for you to uh, take part in, at least you'll have time to, to review things and not do something on the spot. Um, medical treatment and, and devices. There's been a, a lot of calls going out to people uh, through the mail and by the phone where they're offering 
uh, free back braces or knee braces uh, and uh, Medicare is going to pay for them and uh, there's just been people that have been uh, that the Federal Trade Commission uh, busted and it was on uh, my feed this week from then there was 24 people doctors included where they were giving false prescriptions for uh, these devices uh, to the tune of about uh, almost two million dollars over the last three years uh, but they did catch that ring but there are many more out there so uh, if you have an issue with where you might need a back brace uh, or a knee brace talk to your doctor and they can work out the details <coughs> of your problem and contact Medicare for you. On the computer end, uh, there's a lot of times where uh, you may receive uh, an email uh, that wants to uh, verify information. It could be from uh, your bank or any other service provider that you're familiar with, uh, but just don't, uh, don't go and uh, give your information out uh, if, uh, if, if it's something you don't know about. Call your uh, service provider, and we've said that before, but check it out without uh, going, uh, putting information online. Uh, you can click off of that site and delete it and, and, and follow up if you so choose. Changes and updates to your accounts. These are things that happen a lot where uh, they uh, say they're, they're changing over a system. Uh, they need to revamp uh, your information to make sure that you receive uh, your benefits or your uh, information from your service provider and they'll fish for uh, your uh, personal information. Again, it happens. Another one online and it affects young people and old is the romance scam where uh, someone might just want to find a, a social connection, somebody to spend some time with and uh, they'll go on a site like Match.com or Christian Mingle or any of the other sites out there and they'll develop back and forth uh, emails with someone and that someone may invite them to go off of these protected sites and go on to another email address for one reason or another and they'll build confidence uh, that uh, they are uh, a soulmate and all of a sudden now they're in love with you and uh, they want to come and visit and be with you uh, face to face but they need five hundred dollars for a plane ticket to come and see you or uh, they've got a medical emergency and you're the only one that can help. And if they start asking for money, uh, just be very cautious and don't get drawn into, into that. I know uh, they can really uh, build that relationship. Uh, they are professionals and they're giving, feeding back to the, the, the respondent in, in ways that uh, they were looking for a connection and they, they really felt the need to have someone in their life and then they get uh, someone that wants to take advantage of them. Uh, friends in need. Uh, you may get a, an email from someone that you know and you know they travel and you might, they might say that uh, they're in London, uh, they uh, have been robbed, their passports are gone, their money's gone, and they need uh, your help to get home. It may be, uh, could you wire me $1,000 or $1,500 or something like that and, and you know that that could be true. They, they, they do a lot of travel or what ever, but before you would ever send money off, uh, you just want to check with a, a, another friend or even check with them. They're probably not even out of the country. So those are some of the computer scams that are going on. And we just want you to be aware that uh, we can do some, recognize some red flags on these uh, uh, computer outfits. Uh, unsolicited mail, uh, emails, uh, asking for information. Just delete the site and don't uh, interact with them at all. Suspicious emails, again, requesting personal information. Uh, don't comply and don't uh, put anything in there that would reflect on uh, your personal uh, information on accounts or those types of things. And then if someone just met you online, uh, the possibilities of them uh, falling in love with you without even saying hello face to face are very slim. Uh, a friend that has never asked for money, uh, all of a sudden asks for financial help. Uh, you know, we all have that, uh, you know, kind of compassionate soul or spirit, uh, but check things out very carefully before you would uh, wire money to uh, someone like that. Uh, so, some of those types of requests. 
how to avoid, um, we can avoid these issues just by not clicking on and deleting links. Uh, don't provide personal information, we can't say that enough. And uh, look up the business uh, telephone number for yourself and call it directly to see if, if indeed there is an issue or a problem. And don't feel pressured. Don't get caught in a, in a box that you have to take action, you have to uh, take care of this right away. Uh, just check things out and be very thorough in your investigations. Remember, uh, your account information is your own and you, it deserves your protection. So uh, don't wire money uh, to or send gift cards uh, to people uh, that you know. I had an incident where we meet with law enforcement in our county and I asked the sheriff if I came in with a stack of uh, iTunes gift card, could I bail my buddy out of jail? And he said, no, that's not going to work. So uh, just know that uh, these uh, requests for gift cards and stuff, uh, that money is gone. Once you give them the number off the back, it's gone and it's in their possession. Uh, if you feel pressured, just resist any further communication. Just get off the line. And if you're asked to keep it a secret, tell somebody because when we look at uh, some of the scams that are out there, uh, like the grandparent scam and some of the other ones, it's you're the only one that can help. Keep it a secret between you and me. I'm so embarrassed. Don't tell anybody. That's a big red flag and you should talk to somebody, a family member or a good friend. Be empowered. That's part of our program. The be wise, be informed and be empowered. Uh, do register your phone on the do not call list. The good guys will monitor it. The bad guys don't care. They're breaking the law anyway, but uh, it's good to have your uh, phones on that list and it does screen out uh, some of them. There are legislative issues uh, going on at a federal level where they're trying to stop these robocalls, where it's automatic dials, where they just dial numbers until somebody answers. Uh, and there are uh, legislation to stop service providers from uh, providing that option for uh, con artists. So um, keep careful records uh, and shred documents. If you uh, get your, um, bank statement or your credit card statement or your clinic review to make sure that uh, what is charged to you is what you have uh, obtained or is something that services that you have gotten and uh, read those over very carefully look for double charges or in the case of clinics that you uh, aren't billed for tests that weren't run or uh, double billed for different issues uh, those are things that we can have the power to do and uh, uh, trust your instincts. Uh, you know, uh, most of us didn't get this far in life without recognizing uh, some of the pitfalls. Uh, you know, even uh, these uh, late night ads uh, on TV where they're offering lotions, potions, or pills uh, to cure our ills, and there's a 30 day free trial, uh, and all they need is your credit card for shipping and handling. And if you don't read the fine print, well, you think, well, I can try it for 30 days. And it may say, if you don't respond to us within 10 days, you have authorized us to send you our goods or material uh, on a monthly basis, charge your credit card. So uh, just know that there's really uh, no free lunch out there. And if you respect, uh, expect a scam or a fraud and recognize it, uh, report it to the Better Business Bureau. Uh, at bbb.org or calling us during business hours at 800-646-6222. We like to hear about what's going on in our region and if we collect enough data on these things we can help uh, law enforcement maybe uh, shut them down. Um, and do uh, register uh, on the direct mail association if you want to stop or slow down junk mail. This gives you an opportunity uh, to uh, eliminate a lot of the things uh, that you maybe don't want to get in your box. And uh, a thing that we kind of want to watch in mail too is uh, if you're receiving uh, prepaid credit card offers, you are uh, approved for a $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 credit line, you can go and, and check that out and, and put yourself on a do not mail list for credit cards. Uh, that way if it, your approved letter gets stolen out of a mailbox or dumpster dove, 
with a little bit more information, uh, these con artists can open that account up at a new address and you won't receive uh, anything until the bills aren't being paid. And so just monitor those options. There are a lot of things that we can do uh, to protect ourselves. The Better Business Bureau has instituted a uh, program called Scam Tracker. And this is nationwide and actually through Canada, where if you hear a, uh, a scam opportunity that's uh, going through your area, you can report it online saying in the Grand Rapids area, uh, the grandparent scam is running wild or the IRS calls, and that'll uh, be a pin in your uh, definite geographic area where others can go look as what's happening uh, in the community or in the county uh, or even in the region and get a good handle on uh, some of the scams and frauds that are uh, plaguing uh, locals. So it's a very good system that's been uh, instituted and it's being widely used. We put together uh, a list of uh, the top 10 scams uh, that are uh, reported through the scam tracker last year and uh, tax scams where uh, people can uh, gain your information and file for your tax return before you do. Uh, there was a, a group of uh, people, uh, they actually were uh, criminals that set up a uh, hotel room where they were having a job fair back several years ago and so people came in and they had eight or ten booths set up that looked like legitimate companies and they were asking for uh, if you were interested to fill out a job application that gives them your birth date, your social security number, all your address and all that information that you would normally put on a job application and then they took that information and filed for tax returns uh, prior to when just when uh, the, the uh, uh, Ten, or W-2s came out and the people had to, uh, the money was already gone, so they had to work through the system to prove that they did not receive it. Um, so, uh, and you owe money to the IRS, that one has been around and it, it'll keep on because it, it does work with some people. Debt uh, collection schemes where <clears throat> you'll get a call uh, saying that you owe money uh, from the past and you aren't sure what's going on and they bring some people uh, forward to uh, pay off an old debt so it, it doesn't destroy their credit rating, those kinds of things. Uh, phishing emails uh, or phone calls, uh, information gathering has been uh, a real primary uh, scam and fraud, especially directed at our senior population. Employment schemes, uh, working at home, an opportunity to uh, supplement your income by doing all kinds of different uh, data entry or, or different things online uh, or through the mail. And uh, uh, for the most part, uh, these opportunities are bogus and you'll have to uh, pay money up front for uh, training materials and uh, other things to complete the job and uh, then you'll uh, generate this monthly income. And it's, it, it's really a bogus scheme to get you to prepay up front. Online purchases. Make sure that you're dealing with a reputable store or company and know that and check to see uh, the box up if this is a secure site you're dealing with, especially if you're uh, sending funds. And if you see something that pops up on, on your email or even on Facebook where there's this tremendous offer on a product uh, and you uh, want to go for it, uh, just know that it could be a, a scam where uh, you'll uh, want to purchase this item at a very reasonable price. Uh, you send in the payment and you don't receive the item. So uh, be very cautious of how you uh, do online business. And uh, it's, it's a real tool uh, to use, but it's also a tool now for the con artists. Uh, gift card offers, uh, you know, uh, you receive an email uh, say from Target or Walmart, uh, that you uh, have a $100 gift card waiting for you and you just need to uh, put in your information. Again, they're doing that phishing program with this and uh, they'll uh, lure you in with a $200 gift card or uh, any amount uh, at a store that you recognize. Uh, B 
be it a, a store that you uh, use often, and so you think, well, geez, uh, that's a nice deal. I can uh, use a $200 uh, gift card. And so you provide the information. They now have your information, and the card never shows up. So uh, sweepstakes scams, uh, they are rampant. They take a lot of money out of our state. And target, uh, you know, all uh, demographics and generations, but seniors are most at risk, uh, where uh, they may get the uh, uh, I have won, you have won the publisher's clearinghouse, uh, and uh, you just need to pay some fees and taxes uh, to get things uh, uh, done. I received at uh, my business email at the Better Business Bureau an offer that I had won a Dutch lottery for $8 million, and all I had to do was uh, provide my uh, information uh, so they could transfer to my bank, and I need to pay some fees uh, for uh, taxes and issues like that. And I'm going, these people don't check their email list very well if they send it directly to the Better Business Bureau. So uh, they're out there. Uh, advanced fee loans. If you are in a, a situation where you're offered <coughs> a loan, uh, a short-term loan uh, where uh, you think, well, I, I, I need this money to tide me over to take care of a car repair or something like that, and uh, they charge you a fee up front. It could be 10, 20 percent of the money that you're borrowing they want up front to initiate uh, the, the loan and the paperwork. And you send that fee up front and nothing else happens. You're out the, the extra money. Uh, government grant schemes, another uh, thing that is out there, especially uh, targeting uh, people that <coughs> um, uh, seniors involved, where they offer, uh, you have qualified for a government grant and a research program that we're doing. Uh, you just need to uh, file uh, for this grant, uh, and there's a filing fee, those kinds of things. Uh, just know that. Uh, you know, grant applications typically you have to search out. They don't come knocking on your doorstep. So those are some of the things, and there's a hundred more out there that we could talk about today. Uh, but just know that <clears throat> the crooks, the scam artists are out there, and there's new things coming up uh, every day. And uh, there's so much public information about all of us out there that they can make things sound uh, legitimate. And uh, so just be very cautious. And we want you to, to have a conversation. Uh, talk to your friends and neighbors. If you have a, a scam issue that you've been contacted by, talk to you over coffee. Talk to uh, <clears throat> your friends and bring it up, saying this has been happening, and this is uh, what I heard, and this is what I hung up on. And uh, uh, I know I've had people that have gotten the grandparents call, or and they get so emotional that it, logic just goes out the window. So uh, talk to people, share this information uh, with uh, family members, uh, especially maybe elders that are uh, you know kind of shut in or uh, uh, secluded, uh, and just make sure that uh, people have the information in front of them, and you can contact the Better Business Bureau uh, to get uh, information sheets on. Uh, different scams and frauds that are out there. You can go to us uh, and uh, ask questions about charities, about uh, businesses, and we can uh, give you the information that we have uh, so you can make informed decisions. I want to thank the station for giving me this opportunity uh, to share this information with you today. And uh, the staff here uh, and the management have been uh, very accommodating, and I wanted to applaud that. Uh, Gary Johnson, be wise, be informed, be empowered.